Hey guys, I'm back. I'm Mrs. Brain Thing. And this is my third video of the little series I've been doing. And so this video is going to be covering uh, treatments of Chiari malformation. And this video is going to be short because I really don't feel good today. But I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to get into that in my next video. I'm going to do this video to uh, go ahead and close out the three-part series I was telling you guys about. And my next video is just going to be an update on how I'm doing because I, I'm i really not feeling that good. So, okay. So, I, again, I still have my notes. But um, I'm going to go ahead and insert some of my own things in here. Okay. So it says, uh, treatment for Chiari is directed toward the specific symptoms that are apparent in the individual. Okay. Treatment may require the coordinated efforts of a team of specialists such as pediatricians, neurosurgeons, neurologists, ophthalmologists, and other professionals. So I personally had a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, and an ophthalmologist because I told you I lost my peripheral vision. Okay? So it says treatment and procedure interventions depend on a number of factors including disease, progression, presence or absence of certain symptoms, the individual's age or health, relationship of the malformation to the main physical symptoms. Okay. So now I uh I have a direct quote from rarediseases.org that I wanted to read to you guys. It says neurosurgeons and other physicians may disagree as to the best approach to treat a Chiari malformation. There is no specific agreed upon therapy or treatment regimen. Different neurosurgeons may recommend different surgical techniques or treatment regimens. Now, I didn't uh, get into this when I first started making my YouTube videos because by the time I started making my videos, I was about, well, like a week away from having my surgery. So I'm going to backtrack for you guys. Uh, before I actually, uh, before it was planned for me to have the craniectomy, uh, I was seeing a neurologist. And I'm not going. I'm not going to say any names because I only say names to people that I get the permission from before I make the videos. Like Dr. Gregorian, he's agreed to you know to let me mention him and to get him on video and all that stuff. So anyway, I was seeing a neurologist, and um, what he wanted to do was, which not him because he don't do the surgeries, right? So what he wanted to do was send me to Atlanta to get a shunt placed. And so what would have happened was uh, I would have had to shave the side of my head rather than, um, you know, like how I did the back. And there would have been a shunt draining the fluid that was on my brain. Cause I told you guys I had to build up a fluid that was on my brain. So it would have went from there. He said the tube would have ran down the side of my neck and went all the way down to my belly. So that way, the extra fluid would go from my brain to my belly. And so that was his uh, recommendation for the fix of all my symptoms, of everything that was going on. It was just to drain the fluid off my brain by just having it route to my stomach. And so uh, my neurosurgeon said that I should have the, uh, the actual decompression surgery because that's going to be a fix-all for, for everything. So if there's no blockage of my cerebral fluid by doing the craniectomy. I would need a shunt to get the fluid from my brain down to my stomach. You see how that works. So, and that's why I tell you guys, uh, please make sure you do your research. Don't just get any old doctor. Don't just take anybody's word for it. You know your body more than any of these doctors or surgeons know your body. You know exactly what you're going through. Do your research and find somebody who does this for a living, not just uh, you're the only case of Chiari they ever had in their life. I mean, somebody that really majors in it, that that's what they do every day. Pick somebody that really knows what they're talking about. And I'm not going to say that the neurologist I went to don't know what he's talking about, but what I'm saying is if I would have had a shunt placed, a lot of times a shunt has to be uh, repaired or uh, replaced. So having a shunt in and having a lump in there and a, a tube, and even he said that it would kind of be visible, you know, you would see it 
on the side. And then afterwards, I Googled some pictures and I saw what he was saying. But something, I, I'm i not knocking anybody or what they choose to do. But for me, having a foreign object in my body, especially because I have a, a brain condition anyway, that wouldn't have been a good fix. It would be better to probably fix what is causing the fluid to build up rather than just treating the fluid build up. Does that make sense? Okay. So like I said, uh, do your research and every doctor's different. It doesn't, you can go ahead and get a couple of opinions before you actually decide on what you're going to do. Because remember, this is your body that they're going to crack open. I only have one head. I only have one brain and one life. So the decisions I made and the people that I've trusted is based upon uh, who I believe is the most qualified. And Dr. Gregorian has a lot of experience doing these surgeries and he's studied the care of malformation and he, he, he's put in his time and he knows what he's talking about. And even when you sit with him, you know that he knows what he's talking about. So like I said, not knocking anybody, but do your research. Okay. All right. Back to my notes, right? Conservative approach for mild symptoms. Okay. So, uh, this is a conservative way to treat you know, a care malformation, if you're not having that many symptoms, like if you're just suffering from a headache every two weeks or whatever, uh, this one strand of hair. Okay. So conservative approach include pain meds, massage therapy, reduction of activities and physical therapy. Okay. And, uh, physicians argue that these are not effective. So if, if you're as bad as I was with, I've already had lost my peripheral vision. I had the fluid, uh, the fluid build up on the brain and I had, um, I'm trying to think of the name of seizure that it was, but it was a, a absent seizure. So if, if you're that far, physical therapy and pain meds and stuff isn't going to really fix that. So it really depends on where you're at with your, uh, symptoms or your condition, how many millimeters you're actually herniated, if you're herniated. So there's a lot of factors that goes into that. Okay. So now this is going to describe the type of surgery. That's the most common surgery, the one that I had. It's called the posterior fossil decompression. Okay. It says with this procedure, the surgeon removes a piece of the skull, which is called a craniectomy when they remove the piece of the skull. And the bony covering of the spinal canal. Now that's called a laminectomy. So you're getting a craniectomy. It's that spot over here. And then down my neck, that's a laminectomy. In most instances, a labiectomy is limited to the first cervical vertebrae, the C1. Inclusion of the other vertebrae is done based on the individual's herniation length. So I had uh, my, this, my C1 and C2 were uh were opened up because my herniation was down was down that far so he did go into my c1 and c2 vertebrae for me okay uh the the tough outer membrane covering of the brain and spinal cord the dura is cut and a patch is i'm sorry it's cut and the patch to make it bigger the duraplasty is sewed on a duraplasty is performed to provide even more room for the decompression. Okay, so when he cracked open the skull, right? How he expanded the area was putting that thin layer they're talking about. They call that the uh, duraplasty. And so on me right now, my head and about half my neck is actually soft. Like you could press all the way in there. Because the, now it's still a soft spot. It's still, like I said, my head back there to the top of you know how my haircut goes and I know you guys can't see it but my hair covers the top of that incision to have my neck is soft and what I've been told is that the area is going to uh harden that duraplasty that little layer they put on there it's going to harden over time but right now it's a soft spot for me okay some neurosurgeons advocate applying a small amount of electricity to the cerebral tonsils which causes cerebral tonsil tissue to shrink and retract. This is more invasive and is not advocated by all neurosurgeons, but appears necessary for at least some patients. 
I did not have that done. He did not um, shrink any part of my brain. And Dr. my surgeon, Dr. Gregorian, he's really conservative in the way he does things. And so he don't do surgery unless that's the last resort. And for me, that was the last resort. That was my only fix to keeping my vision and and keeping uh, keeping things as normal as possible for me in my everyday life without anything else going wrong. So uh, he did not uh, manipulate my brain in any type of way. So there was no shrinkle, uh, shrinkle. There was no shrinkage of my cerebral tonsils. He did not uh, do anything to my brain of that type of nature. An artificial plate. It's put over the area where the skull was removed and it and may be placed onto. Okay. So I didn't get an artificial plate put in my head anywhere. I only have that duraplasty. They didn't put artificial plate. That's what they put. Artificial plate put over the area where the skull was removed. I didn't have that done. Surgeries carry risks such as leakage of cerebral spinal fluid and infection or death. So thankfully, I didn't suffer any of those three things right there. Let's thank God for that. Okay. Individuals with hydro hydrocephalus may be treated by the implantation of a tube called a shunt to drain excessive cerebral spinal fluid away from the skull and the brain to another part of the body where the cerebral spinal fluid can be absorbed. Before surgery can be performed, the excessive fluid may need to be drained via shunt insertion. So that's why I was telling you that he wanted to put in a shunt and mine would have went, it would have been on the side. And you guys could actually Google, go ahead and Google that. Uh, you might want to be careful because some of the pictures may be a little graphic, but you can Google a brain shunt. You could, a Chiari malformation shunt. And that will go, and it shows you exactly what it looked like on the head. It would have been, I had to shave half my head. It would have been on the side, a little square thing. And then it would went behind my ear and down my neck all the way to my stomach. So that's what they're talking about. Um, individuals require periodic follow-up after surgical treatment for a carrier malformation. Symptoms may re recur after a successful surgery, usually within the first two years. Okay, and that's why, that's probably another reason why I do these videos. I mean, the first reason was that I wanted for someone that was going through something like this to have something to refer to. And because I didn't see on YouTube uh, someone that was doing like a whole chronicle of life after surgery. So that was one of my reasons. And, uh, it said now symptoms may come back within the first two years. I just, I, I want to know. I really, I mean, I'm living it, so I'm going to find out regardless. But I really do uh, make this stuff just to follow. And so you guys could see exactly what it is to go through and live with this brain condition. So it says, most likely this is due to the development of scar tissue or an opening around the duraplasty covering the brain. Children require periodic MRI examinations because of the normal, because of the normal continued growth of their brain and skull. Okay, and uh, there was also noted that there were uh, clinical trials being conducted for uh, people that has carry malformation. So that's I might have to look at that. Not that I would look into doing any clinical trials, but I just wanted to see what type of stuff they have going on. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, tell you guys about the cure for Chiari. Can you guys see that? Okay. There's no cure for Chiari. Okay. Don't thank it. Don't thank it. Don't thank it. There is no cure for Chiari. Okay. I hope that didn't look backwards. I'll look at this video and see how that looks. Yeah, there's no cure for Chiari, people. So stop. Not stop, but don't expect to have surgery and think that everything's gonna be handy dandy because it's really it's really not. And um I'll go into my next video on how I've been doing this past week 
it's just been a rough week for me, but I'm going to get into that in the other video. But no, there is no cure for Chiari. So if you know anyone that had the brain surgery and they had it for a year or two or three or five, and you're wondering why they're still complaining or why they still act sickly, surgery is not a cure. Okay. And so here's a paragraph uh, I found. It said, the goal of surgery is to stop the progression of changes in the anatomy of your brain and spinal canal, as well as to stabilize your symptoms. Okay, so if your brain is sinking down into your, uh, let's see, into where it's not supposed to be, say you see one, right? And the surgeon goes in and expands it. So the fluid could go around your brain. He didn't remember, he didn't push your brain back up in there. He just expanded that area so there's more fluid passing. Isn't it possible for the brain to go ahead and still somehow through uh, injury or through just life for it to sink a little further and cause more blockage? So surgery is not a cure. And I don't want anyone that uh, may be thinking or considering surgery or surgery's on the table for you to think that it's going to be an absolute cure. I'm glad I had surgery because it saved my uh, my livelihood, how I want to live. So my vision has improved a lot. I mean, I went from wearing close to minus five. If anyone knows anything about prescriptions, I used to be a, 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 a an optician. I couldn't think of the word. But uh, I wore minus five before surgery. And like I said, my peripheral vision was gone. And so I went from that to a minus 250 and my astigmatism went down. So there's there's a lot of benefits in my life, even still, even with all this pain, it's 100% better. But there is no cure. I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm ready to go skydiving or anything. But the surgery is something that if you need it, it's going to benefit you probably 100%. Your quality of life is going to be better. But don't expect it to be something that is not going to be or expect to never have a headache ever again, you know. And you guys seen that since I had the surgery, I didn't fall twice. I bumped my head that one time, but then I fell the other time. So I, after the surgery, I didn't become less clumsy. So, okay, let's stick to the script, right? Symptoms can take up to a year to resolve fully, and some patients may continue to experience symptoms that have improved but not completely gone. You may even require physical therapy to help strengthen muscles or improve balance or coordination. I told you guys about uh, the physical therapy. Either they saw me in the hospital and they come out to my house. All right. It says a second surgery may be necessary if there is still a buildup of pressure and or impingement on the spinal cord, meaning that the original surgery did not achieve adequate decompression. And that's the end of my notes. Um... Sorry, guys. I wonder how long that's been blurry. But um, the second surgery is something that I am not trying to do. And so I'm going to cut this video short because it's about almost 20 minutes long. But I've been having, uh, this week has been kind of a rough week. And so uh, I'm doing everything in my power to not be one of the ones that need a second surgery. Because this, I really, I really can't. Okay. So... Uh, if you guys have anything you want me to cover since I'm done with this whole little series, you know what? Thank you to the guys that emailed me that made me do all this research to do these videos because it made me really study more on the condition that I have and understand myself and my symptoms more. So I did appreciate doing the little research, but if you guys have anything else you want me to look into or you have any questions about, uh, my, uh, personal care malformation, or anything, anything like that, any brain thing, because there's a lot of brain things out there. Uh, go ahead and message me. A lot of people message me on Facebook, or uh, or you could do it also on Instagram, or you could email me. My email is up on both of those, Instagram and Facebook, and it's under Mrs. Brain Thing, so you can find me. And some of you guys uh, friend me on my personal Facebook page, and that's fine too. So if you just message me if you have anything else for me to cover, but. Uh, I'm going to get into my next video. I'm Mrs. Brain Thing, and I'll see you guys next time.